You could put all kinds of qualifications on it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like you do for like X a, amount of experience. You could put that in if you wanted. Oh, you would definitely want to do something. <laughs> no, no, come on now. I'm not going to get into names like this guy, but there are people. Oh, this Paul County. Paul Marchinson, he was wild. Paul Marchinson. Oh, he was, you're right. He was well, very no, popular. She, she got four kids she's and her, he was a teacher and a principal. He was a teacher, yep. and when and I was honored. I, you know, I just thought that when I mentioned his name, I was twenty. <laughs> I even know the year. Twenty-seven years old. He was the mayor. I know we are. My office. And, oh. Okay, we are recording now, so we're going to start the Energy, Environment, and Land Use Committee meeting on this May eighteenth, five p.m. Thanks a million. Uh, we do have one courtesy of the floor. You have to state your name. And yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Susan Lawless. I am a lawyer here in Easton uh, with Florio Perucci, but I'm also a supervisor with Hanover Township, Northampton County. And tonight there is an application before you from our township, and I wanted to come by and, and say, firstly, thank you for considering our application. And thank you for all the time you do put in. Uh, I, I know what, I'll keep it brief because I know you uh, have a lot of night work. But I, I just wanted to say that Hanover Township does do a lot of conventional things for the environment. And we are very close to the Monocacy. A lot of our stormwater just feeds right into the Monocacy. I'm a member of the Monocacy Creek Watershed Association, and I can see it firsthand. Uh, Han Hanover makes sure we, we're maniacal about cleaning our, our stormwater basins throughout the township. We do a lot of uh, street cleaning. Uh, we have nine parks. We have a very active tree commission. We're trying to become a tree city this year. And, but all of those things that we do are, uh, frankly, very conventional environmental things. This project is in conjunction with our uh, pool and rec center. We incorporated into that plan a landscape architect, a professional, to help us landscape the area and also to create a green so that we can use the pool area, which is a large green space, times when the pool is closed but the weather is still nice. So we're going to be bringing a lot of people into that complex. They designed a, a rain garden to deal with the stormwater uh, management needs of the pool complex. It is new technology and we're confident it will work. But what's really important to me as someone who has grand ideas and plans for other of our stormwater basins is it may be a, a leader to show that this very forward green technology works and is aesthetically pleasing. And this will be a showcase because people will be coming there in the summer and they will see it. They will see it in the fall and they see, will see it in the spring. And if it works, it will be a leader for new projects, I believe, in Hanover Township. So I just wanted to come here and say, we ho I hope, and I know the rest of uh, my members on uh, the Board of Supervisors, hopes that you will look upon our application favorably and thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Coming today. Um, makes me wish I stayed in Hanover, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, discussion of 2023 Livable Landscape Grant Program recommendations. Sharon, you're up. Thank you very much. Sherry Acevedo, Conservation Coordinator with the Division of Parks and Recreation. I'm presenting to you tonight some awesome, high quality projects in our 2023 Livable Landscapes Grant Program. Whoop, wrong way. Oh my gosh. Now wait. How did that do that? Went backwards. I wonder if this is set up for left-handed. That's interesting. It, it could be. Because I, uh, I pressed what he told me to press, and it went the wrong way. Down here. OK. All right. All right, here we go. So livable landscapes, our open space plan that we have for Northampton County 
basically culminates, and this is from, it was adopted back in 2016, um, looking at the mosaics of a combination of our parks, our farmland, our open space, our green land area, in addition to the balancing of our recreation opportunities that we may have. All looking at promoting healthy lifestyles and of course sustaining our community character and identity throughout the county. Our goals that we implement are the six goals that you see listed here. Within them, we are not only implementing ourselves as your Division of Parks and Recreation, we also require it for each and every one of our grantees. So in the grant applications, they have to disclose and they have to explain to us, as you just heard some of it tonight, they have to explain how their project relates to our existing goals which is very high level. So in each of these, all these projects relate to multiple of these goals, which is, which is exceptional. And that's all part of our review and ranking process. Our accomplishments since 2006 for the overall grant program success, we have preserved over 3,400 acres of environmentally sensitive and natural areas. Our county investment has been over $8.7 million into that. That also includes our own Northampton County acquisition and easements that we have been doing with the addition of over 338 acres since 2019 to our park and our preserve system. In addition, we have funded 130 grants through the Municipal Park and Development and Rehab Program uh, with a county investment of 10.95 million. This also includes over 300 miles of land and water trails, especially in our regional trail network system and our environmental restoration projects. Those are stream bank stabilization projects um, and our in-stream habitat improvements. And you'll hear one of them tonight as well. Within the grant program are eligible categories. Again, you see the consistency with our own open space plan goals. The eligible project categories are land conservation. This is the first one. This is the only category that is open year round because of the nature of acquisitions and or conservation easements. Um, we do have that as a scrolling application period. The other three categories, the other four categories of ecological restoration, planning, education and outreach, municipal parks and regional trails, they are all once a year application round. We typically open up the round in January. I host the grant workshop in February and applications are due in March before the state grants are due to DCNR. Um, that is essentially what our timeline is. Some examples in each of these categories, just a quick run through with you. Fee simple acquisition is the acquisition or the ownership of the property, transfer of hands, or a conservation easement is the owner, it retains the ownership of the property, but the conservation easement is the overlay on the land that protects it for perpetuity from development. We purchase the development rights. All of this is revolving around threats from warehouses, from other development. It is uh, critically environmentally sensitive areas, uh, can include under the open space program, agricultural fields as well as a combination or a clustering of different topography and different habitat within these areas. There was a report conducted by We Conserve PA about the local municipal open space referendums in Pennsylvania. Northampton County, we are proud that we have 10 now, 10 of our municipalities have their own, we use the acronym EIT for earned income tax, open space programs, where they have the voters per referendum have approved and passed an additional tax on their earned income tax. Typically it's around 0.25% to that is dedicated funds towards open space acquisitions and easements and farmland preservation. So that is through the municipalities. The newest one is East Allen Township. And if you remember last year, they actually uh, received, they just passed it and we had presented as well, they're creating a park rec open space plan because of that. 
ecological restoration. <clears throat> You've heard a lot of these projects before with stream bank stabilization. It can include riparian buffers. It can be a meadow conversion, as you see in some of the pictures here. And that could be turning it from turf grass, in, turf grass into native warm season grasses and native wildflower meadows, in addition to rain gardens. You're gonna hear some of that infrastructure tonight, which is highly functional. All of it's revolving around our climate change, resiliency, and our adaptations as well. Some of these examples of these green sustainable practices for recreation and conservation area, this is at our own park, Wayne Grube County Park. You can see in the before pictures, this is a restoration project that was conducted in 2017 along the the Catasauqua Creek, um, 2018 is when it started, but you could see the before and then the progression of the after pictures. Because of that, what we have also done is enhanced or widened that riparian buffer to include the pictures that you see on the right, Earth Day plantings. Back in 2022, last year for Earth Day, um, what had happened is over 400 plants, trees and shrubs were enhanced to widen the riparian buffer that's existing, in addition, the meadow that becomes wet. So you can see, we just took this picture in April of 2023. You can see the red buds, they were in bloom at that time. Uh, you can see the progression of how the growth is really taken off. So that's leading by our own example as well. Education and outreach. This is a category that can include for municipalities, updating to their existing ordinances, any of their environmental ordinances that they may have, whether it's steep slope, whether it's riparian buffer, whether it's an official map. It's also their park recreation and open space plans. By law, the 10 municipalities have to have an adopted, approved open space plan. After so many years you do, it's always wise as a municipality to look at those plans, to update them, to revise them. We encourage them, come into the grant program, especially if they need a comprehensive park rec and open space plan, because we like them to really balance all of their uses, especially now with the development pressures that we have in the valley and especially within the county. We wanna make sure that they're looking at everything holistically and they're looking at how they can counteract with those goals, but also work together through their committees. This is one of our biggest categories that we receive, and you're gonna hear a lot of them tonight, the Municipal Park Development and Rehabilitation. One of the things that we say is it's for recreation, but one of the issues we've all been dealing with is the stormwater management. Each municipality is required with their MS4. This helps with that, with their planning effort, with their credits. So we build in, similar to as DCNR, the state does, we want to see what green infrastructure improvements that they are doing, what techniques for best management practices, what are they looking at with these strategies of how they're managing the stormwater. So we go out, we work with them. Our review committee had met, and part of our charge is Nate Pritchard, who is our watershed specialist, he and I had follow-up visits with two of our municipalities just to clarify and, and go over and reinforce a couple of stormwater management techniques that we assisted them with as recommendations, and they made the necessary changes. Compliance with ADA accessibility, this is federal law, but we also make sure that they're doing that. We have their engineers are doing that. They have to sign off at the end of the project, the project closeout time. Their engineer and or solicitor has to provide a letter saying that everything was designed in accordance to all federal, state, local laws, bidding procedures, and of course, accessibility. These are some examples of grant projects um, that, are, that are here that we have previously funded. Whether it's trails, whether it's their park Parking areas. I'm sorry, did you have a question? Do you have a question? Is the, the, the far right? Is that yes. The it is. Uh, it's the Freemansburg Pedestrian Bridge. I thought you that a lot. Yep. Yep, absolutely. But you can see the approach to the bridge, how that is with the switchback. Um, everything is, is compliant with ADA. 
Our last quarter, uh, category is our regional trails. This is our September 11 National Memorial Trail, our Two Rivers Area Trail, the DNL Trail, Lehigh River Water Trail, Delaware River Water Trail, and the county back in 2019 adopted a plan for our Northern Tier Trail, which is the northern end of the county at the base of the Blue Mountain. We had a feasibility study that was adopted. So we have been encouraging our municipalities to um, implement all the recommendations in those plans. As we gave the overarching, they contributed the input towards it, and now it's time for implementation. And you're gonna see some of that implementation tonight as well. This is a map by Lehigh Valley Planning Commission of our Lehigh Valley trails. You can see from a regional perspective of the two county region, all the existing trails that are here in addition to the proposed and the conceptual. Now, a lot of them have been uh, closed, as we call them trail gaps, or they're being advanced in one stage or another. But we are very blessed with having wonderful regional trail networks all throughout the county, but also our two county region as well. Mm -hmm. We wanna keep supporting that and reinforcing it especially. Passive recreation opportunities, these are things like walking, bird watching, nature photography, hiking, trails, uh, fishing, um, bird watching, kayaking, canoeing, all of these types of things that they can do not only within our county parks, but also in our municipal parks as well. More of the green sustainable practices, one of the overarching goals is we want to promote the infiltration. Infiltration, the easiest way to look at that is consider it like a sponge. You take a sponge, you put water on it, it absorbs it, it soaks it in. If not, when you have what's called an impervious surface, which is the pavement or the concrete, any type of water hits, what happens? Flushes. And it's at a high volume, a high rate that dissipates. In the instance of what we're trying to do with these sustainable practices is we're trying to do the absorption. Mm -hmm. So it can flow in and it slows down that volume. The picture here that you see on the right is our own bioswale that was converted um, two years ago. This is in the third growing season now at Louise Moore Park. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, this used to be a uh, pavement paved surface, 1,800 square foot with a drain at the end. Mm -hmm. And now it is a functioning, living biomass and wonderful little garden that has the plants and everything else that absorbs the water. We want to minimize the impacts to the natural landscape all around. And of course, the promotion and the use of Pennsylvania native plants. This deters and it eliminates invasive plant species, which as we know, become a major problem that we see. Here is the before and after of the bioswale conversion at Louise Moore Park. You can see what a dramatic transformation and there were over 1,500 native plant plugs. They're about like this big with the roots that come down that are the smaller plants that were put in addition to hand seeding. So you can see the progression in 2021, 2022, and now just recently in 2023, it took this uh, probably about a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. So you can see throughout the changing seasons, the different plants and the showiness of the plants as well. So not only is it functional, but it's also aesthetically pleasing. And lots of butterflies, we have swallowtails that are out there, monarchs. So it also provides wildlife habitat as well. This is an example of a naturalized stormwater detention basin. You see them popping up everywhere, but what happens? People mow. The whole point, so the water is not laying and it's not stagnant, which promotes mosquitoes, West Nile virus, all those other aspects, is again, to have it functioning similar to a wetland. And that's what the picture on the right is showing, that the enhancement of the native plants, whether it's grasses and or um, plugs and or seeds for wildflowers, you want it to be functional to absorb those wet, the wetness that's coming in. Climate change impacts, you can see the severe flooding. These have been recent in the past so many years, especially down at Fry's Run. We have our small park that's down there. 
constant flooding. Um, restoration projects have been done no sooner they're planted, a big storm comes through and the plants, some of the plants didn't even have a chance to get stabilized into the soil, which is the benefit of the use of native plants, but they still need time to stabilize and to get rooted. Um, lots of consequences, not only to our human health, but to the economy and to the overall environment with the flooding conditions. You can see, this is the Delaware, the bottom right, Delaware River at the confluence down in the city of Easton. See the transition at the dam where it's blue water and then you get the muddy from the muddy Delaware. So depending upon what rainstorm and whether it's coming from the Lehigh River, whether the rain's hitting the hardest of where you see that. So in 2023, we identified grant priorities. The reason is to maximize, especially in our municipal park category, to maximize the applications that could be coming in that we could help support more municipalities. Instead of getting one major application for 200 or 300,000, and then five or 10 others aren't gonna get any funding for that. So within this, our change that we did in the municipal park category is we put funding caps on. So the replacement of outdoor rec equipment aged 15 years or more, maximum grant request up to 75%. Environmental restoration and best management practice, which, which is what we just reviewed, some examples, that maximum request is up to 50,000. Any new trail development, existing surface replacement, that would be 10 years or more, uh, best management practices and safety fencing, that maximum request was 75,000. And any new development to a municipal park or a preserve is up to 75,000. We have an evaluation committee. Frank is on our committee. Uh, Nate is with us on our committee, Brian and I, and we also have our, our chairperson of our Park Rec Open Space Advisory Board, Paul. He is also on our committee as well. When we meet, these are the things that we're looking for as a checklist. We're looking at each of the applications. We look at the eligibility and the consistency. I, Brian and I do a pre-review of this just to make sure they're complete applications. We have everything that we need. We meet as a team and we look at, were they consistent with the 2023 priorities? We also look at how do they relate in their narrative that they provide to us? How do they relate to our you know, consistency with the livable landscape goals? But not only that, their own plans, whether it's their comprehensive plan or a regional comprehensive plan or a state plan. So we look at all of those factors in each of these. And we also look at how many existing grants do they have open? Can they handle the capacity? Those types of things. All of these projects have passed that we received in the 12 applications, they all passed everything with flying colors and we're here recommending them for approval tonight. The first one that I'm presenting to you is the borough of Hellertown. This is the Reinhards Park Improvements Project. This is a small pocket park, used to be a school. They have a ball field there, but that's it. This was the site of, in their planning process, where their new public works facility was going to be to consolidate with their police department, their salt shed, all those types of things. Community came out and said, no, we want more green space. We do not want that. So the community listened and they, they minimized to just the new park building that their maintenance team has new offices and some bays to store things, but that's it. So what they're proposing to do, as you can see in this schematic or the site plan, is they want to do as part of phase one development for this park. They want to build accessible pathways, ADA ramps on the existing sidewalks at the four corners. So that way it's a walkable community for the children of the neighborhood to walk there safely. In addition, new fencing, they're gonna put up a gazebo with a native plant garden adjacent to it. Uh, accessible resting areas, those accessible resting areas will have from the trail a, a pathway and then a concrete pad underneath the bench. So that way it's fully accessible. 
In addition, they're gonna do the enhancements in native landscaping with their native trees, shrubs, and plants. Not only in the, the rain garden, but also in the native plant garden that's going to be adjacent to the gazebo. And of course, they'll prepare an operations and maintenance plan for all these, the acronym is BMP, for best management practices that we just went through some of them. So in this, they're addressing the accessibility, they're using universal design, which is another federal standard um, for the accessibility for their passive recreation. In addition, they're promoting the sustainable habitat to infiltrate the stormwater, but also uh, serve as a natural buffer as well. And this one is in the municipal park category, and it's in the grant amount of $75,000. They also submitted a grant to DCNR for matching funds. Okay. Great. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, just one. Um, the project costs. <clears throat> one of the things as I've talked to municipalities, uh, they're seeing prices much higher than what they had expected. Um, are you confident with the total project costs and uh, how? Some of these plans take years to develop, and if this is something from three or four years ago, I, I'm concerned that the cost may in fact be much more. Have you looked into that? We have, in discussing with the municipalities, because they do have a one-on-one -on -one follow up with me after the grant workshop and with their engineer, and one of the things that they had stated is these internal pathways, maybe instead of going with pavement, they might use a crushed stone surface material, which is still ADA compliant. That reduces the cost significantly. So that's a, a perfect example of building it in. So for instance, in the parking area where they have the ADA um, access for the spaces, they may do a pavement, I mean, it's already paved, but they'll just line them. So there's, there's little tricks of what they can do when they're evaluating and they're looking at those costs. Unfortunately, with bidding, you just never know what's gonna come in because of the fuel costs at that time and the supply and the demand. Mm -hmm. So you have no idea, but from the discussions with the engineer, because the engineer actually certifies these costs. I'm not an engineer, so that's why we require that from the municipal perspective, the engineers send us that and they certify it. So the answer is yes, they, they have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure. I, this cuts across <clears throat> all these projects. People have been talking to me about different projects they're putting together or want to put together. And I see there's a use now of um, to reuse tires and plastic and, and companies are coming up. Is, is that something that is, I mean, it's supposedly, they say, well, see, we're recycling, we're using, but is that good? I mean, if somebody came to you with a plan and they had this recycled rubber and materials from tires or, or plastic, is that a concern as far as the water supply? Uh, Not I, I, I've heard that that's gaining popularity. <laughs> One, one of the concerns is, is the thickness of it and the level because of, and the size of it because of the accessibility. Yeah. That's a concern. We have the rubber material, for instance, at Louise Moore Tar Park on our fitness trail mm -hmm. because we have three different types of, actually almost four different types of trails. Right. We have ADA compliant where it's partially paved and it goes to crushed stone. We have that fitness trail that has that material because that's for a different use. It's for the runners for the compaction. Right. So you can see that in playgrounds and you can see that on fitness type trails. And there's no ecological concerns with that as far as water runoff? Not that, not that we're hearing through the research because it's confined. It's confined to maybe an eight foot tread, eight foot wide tread, or maybe 10 foot at the, at the you know, largest size. But it's, it's in between grasses. So it kind of catches it, but it's still an absorbent. So it does filter it through, but um, it's something that's, you know, if it's coming up, absolutely in the trail community, we're always evaluating new surfaces, that's for sure. But good questions, thank you. Okay? Okay. Borough of Wilson. 
in this one. It's <laughs> Muser Park Pickleball and Tennis Courts. So basically what they're doing, the borough will be uh, demolishing the existing courts that they have, and they will be converting partial to pickleball courts, and they'll be rebuilding tennis courts as well. So the ratio is six pickleball courts and two tennis courts. Wow. So the question lies, how do we handle the stormwater management? So here's how they're handling it. They will be crowning what's called crowning the surface in the middle. So that way the water is diverted instead of laying, because part of the issue that you see here in the picture is it is flat. There's, there's barely even a 1% where it could be maybe a 5% grade, but it needs to be crowned. So that way part of the water goes off, will be diverted to rain gardens that you see on the right-hand side of the schematic. In addition, on the left-hand side, which is adjacent to the Wilson Borough Trail, which is part of the Two Rivers Area Trail, a whole vegetated swale. And that will catch the water being diverted on the other side of the crowning of the courts. It'll protect the courts. It'll keep them there for a long time. In addition, there is a second rain garden that they are constructing that is closer. It is in the bottom right corner that you see um, because they're gonna be adding and improving an accessible trail getting into the courts and accessible parking right there in that vicinity at the parking lot area. They're gonna be remilling the parking lot as part of the re-improvements because again, they have some dips because of the water that lays. Another way they're addressing that is infiltration areas that have amended soils and then they have trees that they'll be planting. If you've ever been to Lower Mount Bethel Township Visitor Center, that parking lot that you're parking in is one of the oldest and one of the most innovative projects in that time back in the 2000s that had those infiltration areas and mini rain gardens built into the parking lot. Same thing with Polk Valley Park down in Lower Saucon Township. Same type of concept and Wilson Borough will be implementing that as well as part of this project. Well, I'm very happy for Wilson Borough getting something really nice this time, huh? So uh, pickleball courts, huh? Six, this is a yep. thing now, isn't it? This is a huge thing. It's a huge trend in outdoor recreation. There are leagues, there are tournaments. Um, it's, it's a big activity that people want and the residents are going to their municipalities and the municipalities are responding and saying, we need to improve our recreation opportunities. This is what our residents want and this is what we want to provide. There, I know, I'm going to go out for it one day, you know, get back into it. This is another um, matching grant that they submitted to DCNR as well. Yeah, because DCNRs, their local match is 515,000. Not totally, Not no. Totally. They have other grants that they have awarded, so their local match as a total project is, is 515,000 to our 75,000, so they are well over matching it. Our match requirements are only dollar for dollar. Well, so in this case, technically, they only need to come up with 75,000, but because the total project cost is 590,000, they have to have the 515,000. Right, so have you gotten any pushback from municipalities on the caps that you put back put on the county grant request? No, they understand. Okay, they do. They do. They understand and they're appreciative for, for, for what we did and what we have available that it's still an opportunity. And we're spreading it around. We so. are, and they're very thankful for that. That's the communication that I've received from each of the municipalities is thank you for still mm -hmm. you know, thinking of us and having some funding available. Yeah, so that $515,000 is that representative of several grants or just one DCNR grant? Several. Yes. Including the pending application to DCNR. Oh, okay. That is correct. Okay. So they're just having to go to multiple sources for money now. They have two already confirmed. That's great. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Looks like we're good. Okay. Bethlehem Township. 
This is their municipal park playground unit rehabilitation, a complete rehabilitation. If you've been to the community park and where their community center is, this is that large mm -hmm. playground unit. It is definitely more than 15 years old. It's actually over 20 and they cannot find spare parts. So as some of the equipment breaks down, it's, it's at, the equipment is at an age that it needs to be basically gutted and completely rehabilitated. And their uh, playground supplier had said that as well because they can't get them the necessary parts that they need, so then they may have to close it. In this case, the other adjustment that they're doing is they're utilizing, as you see in the blue surface, mm -hmm. that poured in place rubber um, mm -hmm. surface material, which is the safety surface and it's ADA accessible. If you've ever been over to Cedar Beach, they have an ADA accessible park. There's one, o there's one other park in Bethlehem Township that built this a couple years ago and they love it. The residents were very pleased with the safety surface. So they will be professionally installing the safety servicing and the new units. And the new units will be for the ages between five and 12. Um, they'll also have some for the multiple ages of the two to five-year-olds as like a tot area, but overall they're enhancing the entire area and the connection to the playground as well. And this is another DCNR grant application as a match. Is that rubber surface permeable at all? Yes. So it is. It's yes. So it doesn't it's, it's thinner. Okay. And the way that they lay it also, any surface, if it's completely flat and it's not penetratable, then you're gonna have that laying. Mm -hmm. So they also have to do a little bit of, we call it pitching, yeah. that it has to be raised in certain areas, but also keep and maintain a, a percentage of a slope for the ADA. That's awesome, okay, great. It, that's replacing the uh, wood chip thing. Yes, as you can see in the picture, they have the mulch and they have the bumpers, which are the, yeah. the uh, Tripping old school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this will eliminate that as well. No Is that getting done this summer? Quite possible. Well, yeah. the, no, no, not this summer because of the DCNR grant. No. Yep, yeah. well, so it'll be a next year project. Will they not do it in phases as they get funded? The, um, the DCNR grant funding awards typically happen in the fall oh, okay. of each year. Sometimes it can happen in the summer. Um, so their application round was in April. So they may announce anywhere at, at any time this year, I should say. And then that'll be for, a, they can start implementation next year. Otherwise, if they start in advance, it won't be an eligible cost to oh. DCNR to be ineligible before the contract period. Oh, okay and we make sure that they connect and tie together. Our grants are for two years, so they build that into their timeline that they present to us of how they're accommodating for that. So can we safely assume that all these projects are on the same two-year timeline, that anybody who at least has a DCNR grant? To the best of their ability, and again, in this situation like this, if the supply and the demand of the playground equipment may not be available for 12 or 18 months, that's beyond right. the municipality's control. Right. So in that instance, that's where they come in for um, a request for an extension, and we do a simple amendment to the agreement for a time extension. Right. But in all the cases that we've had in that, they are all legitimate reasons and beyond the municipality's control or the applicant's or the grantee's control. Yeah, hopefully the supply chains are working much better now. We hope so for their sake. Yeah. Okay, great. Moving on. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Hanover Township. Mm -hmm. Hanover Township BMPs at the pool complex. They are rebuilding, this is outside the grant, they are rebuilding a brand new pool on the existing footprint of their own, with their own funding. Wow. That will be done this summer. That has been on target that they were going to be working on. Um, fall at the latest, as long as there's no issues or contingencies. Um, but where the grant comes in is we are helping them with the best management practices. And what's really cool in this project is this. I direct your attention to the left 
image. Mm -hmm. What's really neat about this is this is a hybrid, innovative approach to stormwater management, where they are using and building a subsurface detention basin underneath a rain garden. The rain garden will be on top. So that way it slows. There is karst geology that is underneath the pool area. And this was one of the solutions that the engineers and the landscape architects came up with. So you see the little dome that's there mm -hmm. in the photo and it looks like a channel or a chute going down. That is actually tube lined or it's like an encasing of stone material for infiltration. So that way, as it absorbs into the rain garden, it goes into the detention, the detention, uh, subsurface detention area. And then from there, it filters it out. So it's a slow, low volume release into their existing stormwater pipes that goes into their existing swale that's on, that, that goes underneath the ground and it goes um, in front of the community center all through the middle of the park. So, oh, yeah. th so it's a slowed approach instead of that gushing and that flashing release, because then it minimizes in the karst geology any potential issues of sinkholes or any other karst issues that they may face, which is what they had originally with the pool. So they are hoping that this will help with that. In addition, It'll help with the landscaping as you see in their schematic up top in the top right. It'll help with the landscaping. They're trying to make it like a multifunctional use area. So not only is it active recreation with the swimming pool, with the swim meets that they would have for the competition lanes, but they also want to have like food truck festivals. Maybe they'll have movie nights in the park or at the pool. So they want to make it like an aesthetically pleasing area that's not just a major great lawn, but it includes native hand enhancements as well. That's great, because I remember that pool and um, you know the fencing like went around the pool so that you kind of didn't have a whole lot of space to spread out, but now it looks like there's lots of space within the pool area for like kids to play and, and things like that. And that swale, that um, rain garden, that goes all the way in front of it, doesn't it? Down to that storm drain to the main road that comes out. So that, that road that goes to the uh, um, municipal building, right? Yep, so where you see on, on the right, all the way on the right, I don't have a pointer. All the way on the right of the picture, you can see the community center and the parking lot. It's right in that area where you see the fence line of the pool and you see those trees. Right. That's where this is going to be. That'll catch it. Yeah, that's great. Innovative, okay. And is this, the, this is the first of this kind in this? That we are aware of. Nate was very impressed with it as well. Okay, great. There's different forms of detention basins, but the way this detention is, it's more for a slow release, low volume impact. Okay, great. Lower Mount Bethel Township, again, tennis and pickleball port conversions and stormwater management. So in this one, they're com completely demolishing, as you can see, the damage that's done. The difference in this one at Lower Mount Bethel Township, you have, you can kind of see it in the picture at the bottom, kind of have a steep slope coming down from the woodlands that are directly adjacent, and the water's coming and just laying on the courts. So they're actually going to be moving the courts 10 to 15 feet south. They're, they have an existing uh, batting cage there that's going to be pulled out and they're going to move it ahead and then in the back they're going to have a vegetated swale to the back to catch everything coming off the steep slope. In addition, they'll have a pipe system and what's called a rock apron at the end. Um, there we were talking to them and Nate was throwing out some other suggestions of what they could do because of course 611 is right at the base of that, another steep slope in 611. So we don't want to also cause more issues on 611. So um, these are the techniques that they'll be using at this facility. It'll be two pickleball courts and one tennis court for the conversion. And of course, you know, ADA compliant parking and the accessibility getting into the courts. 
all of these projects that deal with the BMPs, we're requiring all of them, and it's in the resolutions that they're going to have to prepare, prepare an O&M plan, operations and maintenance, for these BMPs. So they know how to maintain them, and they could teach their public works or parks crews how to maintain them. Okay, great. Any other questions? No? Moving on? Okay. Do number of these? So. More Township. More Township is coming in with a park, recreation, and open space plan. This is under the livable landscapes category. They have an existing open space plan. It was adopted back in 2009. Um, they have revised it a few times, but what they're seeing within their committees, between the Recreation Committee, Land Preservation Committee, they need a better alignment of the goals. Mm -hmm. And they want to look at their park facilities and the existing conditions, see what improvements and what the future holds, in addition to their programming that they may have, but also with their open space preservation goals um, and see how they're enhancing them. So a strategic plan will help guide them for the next 10 to 15 years at least as a comprehensive unified plan. Okay, great. Okay. The next one is a hybrid plan. This is Palmer Township with the Bushkill Creek Greenway Parks and Trail Master Plan. This is another one that's a submission to DCNR for matching funds. This is very unique, but it's similar to the Saucon Creek Greenway that we had previously funded um, last year with looking at the corridor of multiple parks. In this case, it's within our Bushkill Creek corridor. They're going to be looking at the Greenway, and they're looking at the existing parks along the Greenway within Palmer Township, Newlands Mill Park, Penn Pump Park. They'll be looking at them and seeing they get hit every year by floods and flood conditions where their recreation facilities and amenities that they're trying to improve are constantly being inundated. So this will address and look at as a holistic approach, what are the improvements they need to do? Is there another dam removal? Yes, there is. Newlands Mill is one of the next dams potentially that could be. This study will help evaluate those types of things. They'll look at how do they improve their ADA accessibility? We all know going into Penn Pump Park, it's very narrow, it's very dangerous. We got the pedestrian crossing that's right there. It's a very narrow um, entranceway. How do you widen that? How do you improve those connections? They'll be looking at trail accessibility, park accessibility, and they'll be updating each of those facilities as part of the recommendations. So this will be a complete master site plan of each of those parks, in addition to looking at the Greenway, Stream Bank Stabilization Project, any other type of watershed issues as a hybrid plan. So it's a combination of a park master site plan and a Greenway plan. Wow. And this is another submission to DCNR as a local match. Great. Okay. The next planning effort under livable landscapes category is Upper Mount Bethel Township, the Portland to Mincy Lake Trail feasibility study. This is an outcome of both our Northern Tier Trail feasibility study and our Mincy Corridor Greenway and Stewardship Plan that we adopted. Mm -hmm. They will be looking at this five and a half mile trail segment. Within there, they'll be making the connection and identifying the preferred routes between Portland Borough and our Mincy Lake Trail. And they'll be prioritizing that and have the action plan. And it'll be a combination on road, off road. The township already owns a couple of small segments of uh, railroad bed. However, there's the trail gaps that they need to figure out how do we make those connections. And whether it's acquisitions, whether it's trail easements, or whether it's share the road type of situation. So this is a feasibility study as part of the implementation of our our existing studies that we have. Any questions? No? Okay, moving on. Okay. Wildlands Conservancy, Bushkill Creek Restoration at their own Binney and Smith Preserve. Um, this is another DCNR grant application. The DCNR grant application was submitted under Bushkill Stream Conservancy, but it's matching to this overall concept and this overall project. This is a result and a continuation of the existing work that Wildlands has done. In the map at the bottom, you could see the uh, orange dot, kind of where the little green squiggly line is, 
is the past dam removal at Binney and Smith at this property, just below it. And you can see in this picture here, and the second one on the right, you can see the elevation change of where the water level used to be. See where the white is on the rocks? Mm -hmm. That's where the water level used to be. As a result of removing that dam, you could see it became restored to its natural elevation of the stream. Brings back the natural habitat of the trout, of the macroinvertebrates, everything, the whole food chain aquatic cycle. In this instance, what they're planning to do is utilize these structures to stabilize and restabilize as a continuation um, to continue to restore the Bushkill Creek and the watershed. They also have invasive plant removal that they'll be doing and invasive plant control on their preserve. But you could see how the shallow water is where the gentleman is walking there. That's where the water temperatures get high and the aquatic life can't support, um, you know, life in that area because of the oxygen dissolving. So uh, why were they avoid, oh, awarded a county grant of 120 when there's a cap on most of them for 75,000? This is under the livable landscapes category. The others were under municipal park. Oh, okay, so this is different. This is Once different category. That, yep. So we can make sure we have some... Yep, okay. good question. Any other questions? Okay, now on to our land conservation category. We have three applications here and they're the last ones. Greater Easton Development Partnership. This is for the acquisition of an Easton Trailhead acquisition project. So this is at the uh, corner of the intersection of Lehigh Drive and Washington Street. It's a one acre parcel, Norfolk Southern Railway uh, Corporation or company, which we dealt with that as well up in Stockertown. And it's to acquire it as a fee simple, but it's for a future trailhead development. The importance here is this is the first step, and as we know, multiple phases of how these trail projects happen. Mm -hmm. Get the site, get the facility, and it serves as a conduit to keep going for future phases, whether it's acquisitions and it's different connections that they can make. The importance of this is, is that these future connections are not only into downtown Easton, but to Humor Park, to um, Delaware Canal State Park, and of course the Delaware and Lehigh Trail, the DNL Trail. So that is huge along the Delaware and Lehigh Rivers because the potential is they can have, as you see in the schematic at the bottom or this, this uh, picture rendering, they can eventually maybe work towards getting some of the trestles down the road, you never know. And you could have elevated walkways. Lots of different plans are in the work for potential future phases, but this helps serve as the conduit to get the ball rolling. It'll serve as a little green space, as you can see in the picture to the right. Um, amphitheater is what they're planning on having, the bike stations like you see along the DNL trail, whether that's down at the confluence or it's up in Jim Thorpe, um, they want to have the green space, but also a, a place that people can go to as well. Hmm. Great. Go I have a ahead, question on um, $375,000 to acquire 1.2 acres. Um, that seems a little steep. Do we have appraisals uh, that uh, confirm yep. that that's what that property is worth? We we do, and quite honestly, our, do you remember our Norfolk Southern? Oh, I know Norfolk Southern is, yeah. has our been difficult to deal with, but. I think ours, I think ours for, um, ours may have been more for 1.4 acres. But there is an appraisal that was included in the application, and they had an, a signed agreement of sale with Norfolk Southern. Norfolk Southern properties are always higher as the railroads. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Just, uh, <laughs> that's a significant amount of money for 1.2 acres, it seems. Uh, it's also in a floodplain, am I correct? This is at a higher elevation. Okay. So they're above it because it's it's the higher grade. McDonald's is down below, yeah. and this is up higher. You could see where the walls are, and then the trestle that goes up. Mm -hmm. So this was part of the uh, with the railroad operations of getting to the trestle. Oh, 
and repairs and everything else. So it's at the higher elevation. Yeah, I, I think if you have that development across the street, that this will be access to recreation. Oh, completely. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Keep going. Okay. Upper Mount Bethel Township, Haddad property conservation easement. This is to secure a conservation easement on approximately 33.6 acres in Upper Mount Bethel Township. Significance in this property, lots of woodlands, um, in addition to the wetlands, the vernal pools, environmentally sensitive species. This is within the Martins Jacoby watershed, our Grady Mincy Lake corridor. In addition, the connectivity, habitat connectivity to the East Bangor wetlands and the East Bangor Lake. It is literally, there's one parcel in between them, but it, habitat wise, it's, it's significant pristine as far as the um, marsh and the wetland species and the upland um, palustrian forested and the, and the shrub and the scrub, scrub habitat that exists there. Uh, lots of aquatic species, vernal pools, the amphibians, and this is a conservation easement that'll be held by both Upper Mount Bethel Township and Heritage Conservancy. Heritage Conservancy will be the holder and the monitor of that easement. Upper Mount Bethel Township is co-holder and the county would be a beneficiary to that. Great. Any questions? All right, let's go. Upper Mount Bethel Township, this is their second one for a conservation easement from their Open Space Committee, Nordstrom property. This is conservation easement on 95.86 acres, very similar landscape, but they also have some agricultural fields, they have pond habitat, they have the woodlands, they also have uh, the headwaters and the stream corridor of an unnamed tributary to the Delaware River. This is literally, um, at the highest point of this property, when you look down and you look across, you're adjacent to the Delaware River and Driftstone Camping, which is in Lower Mount Bethel Township. So just to give you a visual perspective and orientation of where that is, um, it also is related to a natural heritage area of Mount Jack um, for the limestone, and it's also in the Delaware River NHI, the Natural Heritage Inventory for the Environmentally Sensitive Species. So in summary, for our 2023 grant awards, 12 applications totaling over a million dollars. Here's the breakdown in each of the funding categories. For municipal parks, 310,161. OSI environmentally sensitive, over 338,000. Act 13, because of it being a regional trail initiative, that's 187,500. And livable landscapes is the 255,000 for the total of a little over a million dollars in our requests. Great. Turn this on. Um, thank you. Your, I love your presentations and I see the pickleball league starting very soon. But um, so were there only 12 applications? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're the only people who could meet all the requirements because I just noticed that there's nothing at um, the opposite end of the county sort of and is there a reason for that or they just like don't Monoport have all the parameters like like anything say from the Allens and Northampton and any of that sector of the county? So there were 30, 30 potential applicants that signed up for the uh, grant workshop. At that grant workshop, you could tell the municipalities that are ready to go and that have the projects lined up, have the engineering done or anything else. And that's our stress. We want to have the projects as ready to go as possible. So then they're not open for five to six years or more. So, um, and we wanna support that because we see the changing costs and the fluctuation of that. The other municipalities, um, they come to us. So they'll contact me with an interest and then I go out and I meet with them, shared with DCNR as well. Um, there's projects in the works from a lot of the municipalities. Lehigh Township, for example, Brian and I were out with them on site visits looking at their parks because they're preparing for a comprehensive park rec and open space plan. Did the same thing with Moore Township last year. So Moore Township was then ready to come in with the application for this year. So Lehigh Township could be in a similar position as an example for next year. So what you're saying is that they may not be here today, but that you'll continue to work and nurture 
butcher the process. Cause Completely. It's been a labor of love since um, my kid was little. And now look at, at how, yeah. how it's developed. So. Yeah. And that's the key, is I continue to work with them throughout the year, and I encourage them, even the ones that were at the grant workshop, contact me anytime. We'll come out, we'll do a site visit, we'll work with you. I also encourage them, like I showed you in these pictures, I show them the same things. Because I encourage them, go to see these sites that you see your other colleagues doing. Come to us, come to Louise Moore Park, see our bioswale. Like it's, it's not as hard as some people think it may be. Um, so a lot of the municipalities who you may not be seeing have things that could or could not be in the works. And we just continue to keep nurturing them, working with them on refining those projects to get them ready as possible. So the 12 that you see are kind of the most ready. Mm -hmm. So that way they can, whether they have DCNR funds or not, they can get started this year. If they don't have DCNR funds, and as a lot of these you saw, it's their own funding or they have committed funds elsewhere, they can go as soon as we get the grant agreement done. Because I have a kickoff meeting with them just to double check, is there anything else that you need? Once I get the resolution, um, and then they're ready to go from there. This is quite Thank process. you for your commitment and your dedication. To yeah. it, it's it's beautiful to see, and it's and it's nice to see the progress over the years. But, Thank you. And um, I, like, come and do one of those in my backyard. You should do homeowner elect. I'd like to build one of these swales yeah. in my backyard. Because We'd love like to. to. <laughs> so if you need a before and after, you can. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, so I think we awarded some sort of grant money to Bath Borough during the budget season, didn't we? You And so have they come to you with any plan yep. yet? Did they? They, Brian and I are on their committee. Okay. We met with them already. Um, I think that was around Christmas we met. We met for their um, comprehensive plan that they're working on, their Park Rec open space plan, gave suggestions and ideas. And that's what happens in these projects is um, they will contact us and, and we go out, not only meet with them, we help serve on their committees as well or provide any other technical assistance that they would need. That's great. And so how ready are they to, to go? Or is that going to be like an application that they'll put in next year? It'll be for next year. Everything is get them prepped and ready for the next round or the next round. And that's that's where it's the care and the timing that I spend that extra time with them just to make sure you're not there yet. But normally we don't um, give grants for the for the plan per se. We do. Oh, we do. That's we what do. we've. We did some today, but like um, you're involved from the beginning then from the plan all the way to the implementation of the grants, right? It depends. If we help fund the plan, then yes. If it's like a new application that you saw here tonight, mm -hmm. then yes, we are a part of it from the beginning and then we help them and then we know and they filter out and come to us and say, this is what is our high priority implementation. Okay. So that's what's key with the planning efforts. And, and the same thing with municipalities as an example, like Bath, that they may have wanted to start quicker and they want to get themselves ready for an implementation for next year. So part of it is the strategy, the strategy and the timing and understanding that timing and, and our decades of grant administration, um, we know when the deadlines are for these other state grants. Yeah. So we like to get in ahead to help them so then they have a confirmed match from us as the county. Great. And that helps their projects as well. Thank you. But thank you so much for the consideration and for the kind Mr. words. You know, I just had a question. I, a lot of this is like, and you had answered it with uh, Ms. Vargo Hefner, but I, I, the Delaware, it seems communities are taking advantage of their proximity to the Delaware River. Have some of the projects that at least their people are talking about take advantage of the Lehigh? I mean, because it's a beautiful area along the, you know, if you go up to mm -hmm. Walnut, Ports, Lady, and you're coming down. It, 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 I'm just wondering if any of them are trying to, uh, thinking about anything recreational in that area? Well, what's nice is um, up in that region, of course, we have the completion of the DNL Trail Gap 
in uh, North Catasauqua Borough in Northampton Borough. Yeah. That's open and ready. If you haven't been on it, I encourage you to go out in the sea. So those types of projects serve as a catalyst yeah. that once okay. those connections are made, it, it inspires others who may not have been thinking about it or who think, ah, that's well in advance, it's too many years away. It helps inspire them, well, what are we gonna do next? Yeah, I was wondering, because I would think some might yeah. think about branching off, and, and, and as you said, as a catalyst, but I was just curious if they're yep. thinking about it at the Western End. <laughs> We keep encouraging. Okay. That's what we do, and that's part of our role is we keep, we're the cheerleaders for them all. We keep encouraging them. Continue the efforts. Doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions before we get to our last presentation for today? Okay. So we have a, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Brian, did you have anything to add, or are you just like, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Making sure. Presentation uh, from the Sustainable Energy Fund. Thank you for coming here today. And you just want to introduce yourself and then say where you're from, your address. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us today. Uh, I'm uh, Kelly Sanders, the VP of Programs with Sustainable Energy Fund. Uh, and I'm here today uh, to talk about Northampton County CPACE. Should I bring up the Presentation. I know I had sent the sure. presentation in. Uh, or... Does she have the presentation ready? Oh, thank Should you. Should be loaded up then. There you go. Awesome. Slide sharing. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So Northampton County CPACE. Uh, just a brief intro, because you you all have a, a CPACE program. Uh, so just a little reminder uh, that CPACE is a uh, financial mecha mechanism to provide long-term uh, financing for energy efficiency, uh, renewable energy, and water conservation commercial projects. And the uh, the term, the length of the quote unquote loan or the CPACE uh, assessment follows the estimated useful life of the equipment being installed for such energy efficiency, water conservation, or uh, renewable energy measures. Uh, so that this is your uh, website for Northampton uh, County CPACE. Um, and property owners uh, can apply. Many times the uh, capital provider, which is the lender in this field, will uh, apply on behalf of the property owner. And the current program, we've, uh, Northampton has closed a project here, uh, the Commodore in Easton. Mm -hmm. And this project was um, included energy efficiency measures and water conservation measures. Uh, the CPACE financing amount was uh, about 3.5 million. Wow. And, uh, but I'm here today uh, because the uh, governor uh, amended the CPACE uh, statute, Act 30, uh, in the summer of 2022. He amended it to include additional types of measures. So uh, resiliency and indoor air quality are now two measures um, that can be, that can take uh, advantage of CPACE financing. And the, the, one of the larger things that he also did was include multifamily housing as a type of commercial property that can take advantage of uh, using CPACE financing. Uh, so the uh, definition of uh, resiliency is any fixture, product, system, equipment, device, material, or interacting group thereof intended to increase resilience or improve the durability of commercial properties needed to withstand natural disasters. Wow. So we have created, um, as program administrator, we had updated your progr program guidelines to now include um, these new measures. And so that's why, that's why I'm here today. So yeah, but please feel free for any questions. So is this something that uh, the Dixie Cup building would apply to? Yeah. This might be something that would be um, applicable in that way to oh, remediate some things, at least <laughs> repair the indoor air quality. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what, what or how the CPACE now would apply to multifamily housing? Like what specifically would somebody? So the, um, the previous program, mm -hmm. 
or the previous uh, statute explicitly um, did not allow for multifamily housing or residence, residential housing to use CPACE. Um, good question, thank you, because that actually is important. So the, um, the governor added multifamily housing, five units or more can now use CPACE. So um, for, for that type of property to apply, there's really no um, difference. Now they, they are just allowed to apply. So the um, pro program guidelines are basically the uh, rules for application. Uh, the details are in there, how to apply, how to submit engineering report details um, to prove the different measures. So um, for multifamily housing, they just would go about it the same way. So could that be like uh, townhouses, condos, or mm, as, um, Not, uh, yes, townhouses, not condominiums. Okay. Uh, it would be the uh, shared area of the condominium. Um, and then, yeah, um, apartments, five units or more. So in a shared area of a condominium, let's just say, I guess you couldn't do this because you couldn't have like a community solar pro project per se. But if you wanted to put like a solar array in a community, a community owned piece of land or uh, on a community owned roof, you know, because a lot of those communities have continuous roofs that are owned by like the HOA or something like that. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to use CPACE to fund that? Uh, I know with it, 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 it depends because the property owner has to be the one that signs off on it. So that's where I think the with um, it gets sticky. It, gets sticky. Mm -hmm. it does, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Did and you have, sorry, Mr. did you have any questions? Mr. Gofredo. Um, uh, are these only for new construction projects or can you take existing commercial properties and modify and upgrade? Um, yes, sorry, my, my apologies, yes. <laughs> so been. it's for yeah, new construction and retrofit of uh, existing properties, absolutely. Could you give me a couple more examples? So let's say uh, a commercial building is running an old oil boiler and they want to upgrade their heating source to be something more efficient or more sustainable. Is that something that- Yes, that's yeah, great. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, CPACE throughout Pennsylvania so far, um, excluding Philadelphia for the other counties where program admins for, we've closed eight projects so far. Um, some of them have been new construction, some of them have been retrofit. A couple have just been um, solar on top of roofs, on manufacturing roofs, so. Typically, how long does the approval process take if somebody goes to apply for their property or their building and they want to, you know, know how long that kind of process would take? Um, usually, the the part of the process that we see, we, we don't really see the uh, um, the term agreement that goes between the property owner and the capital provider. You know, the the details of the financing. Um, typically, the application process can take a couple of months um, while they're all still getting their capital stack and all the final application materials together. Uh, once we, we receive a final application in as program admin, we have 10 days to review it. And then we provide the county uh, a summary report um, that details the energy measures uh, along with the final document that would, that would be with the final application, which is the statement of levy and lien, which is the closing papers. So and that's signed by the property owner, uh, the county, and um, SEF and the capital provider. So that was the process with the Commodore. Mm -hmm. So I believe it was uh, three years ago that we adopted CPACE. Yes, I was not at SEF at the time, but I'm pretty sure you were one of the first, if not the first county that adopted it, right? We were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we were the first county that did adopt it. And uh, so just for um, the purposes of explaining it to uh, any new members, the county is a pass through for the money and it's on the tax at the end, like your tax bill at the end, it's a line item on the tax bill, and we just take the money and then pass it through. Yes, so how um, CPACE is set up, and this is a program that other states have enabled. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the loan or the, the payment stays with the property, not the property owner, mm -hmm. so that allows for the longer uh, life of the loan. Um, and because of that, the, the payments go alongside with the county. So, um, and we actually had our first um, year of this just now here. So the uh, CPACE assessment goes out through the, um, usually through a treasurer or chief fiscal officer, uh, 
it not necessarily as a second line item or anything, mm -hmm. um, but it just goes, it gets billed the same time as property taxes and real right. estate taxes and gets collected the same way. And then uh, we, uh, as program administrator, are required to send the county a reminder letter of w what assessments are due in that year. Mm -hmm. And then um, the treasurer or the fiscal officer sends out those bills, collects them, and then uh, sends them to a paying agent that then sends it out to the, the capital provider and then um, along the way. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a great program that has been very much underutilized in, mm -hmm. in our county and not just our county, but several other counties. But it's good that we have these upgrades now. We don't have to adopt them again. It's This is already part of the CPACE. Uh, we did uh, adopt it previously. I guess I just wanted to explain that too, that there's no action that needs to be taken uh, because this was amended by mm -hmm. Governor Shapiro, but it does open up these funds for a much more, um, or a broader swath of commercial properties now and uh, just projects, uh, you know, including the HVAC or any of the indoor air quality or anything that fits under that definition of resiliency. So it's uh, great for sustainability as we move forward in the county. Mm -hmm. It's not for every property owner, but the goal is to have the door open so that if someone is ready to use it, it's, it's here. Yeah, great. Any questions? All right, thank you. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming down. I'm glad you found your way in. <laughs> thank you. And um, let us know if there's anything, other updates. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, great. thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, any other, anything else for the good of the order? No, thank you so much. We're gonna adjourn the meeting. With 15 minutes to spare. It's like we're early today, huh? Did great. 12 properties or 12 projects.